All right, Shalom. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We come week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of this society, this civilization, and the upliftment of you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians who are known as the Hebrew Israelites according to prophecy, according to truth. We'll start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And a sincere salutation to all you brothers out there preaching this word and believing this word in sincerity and in truth. Just uh, bring out 2nd uh, Edris chapter 16, start at the top. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. And and that 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 was applying to something different in that day, but in the modern times, Babylon is America. And all these other powers that are associated with the uh the whore that sits on many waters. And the Lord is saying, Woe to all of these nations. Because all of you nations are uh, found uh, wanting. You are guilty of rape, robbery, and murder. And an accessory to it. So jump to uh, si uh, verse 62. Verse 62. Yea, and the spirit of Almighty Yahweh, which made all things and such as out, all hidden things in the secrets of the earth, surely he knoweth your inventions and what he think in your hearts. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. Con, and that's going into the, uh, these wicked elites. That's going into these uh, two thirds of our nation. You know, that's going into the thoughts of the heathen. All of the vanity. The Lord knows it and He searched it out. Even the stuff you think is in the dark, the Lord sees it. Right. The counsel of the wicked, the Lord sees it. All of these uh, catastrophes that's happened across the world is judgment. And it's just the beginning. We done had uh, three hurricanes this past uh, week, and the Lord is just starting to rev things up. You had a terrorist attack in, uh, I think it was London, earthquakes. There's many catastrophes coming, and the Son of Man said that, that this would uh, happen. So continue on that road. Therefore, I have Yahweh exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. And the Lord's gonna put you to shame, man. That go for two thirds of our people and that go for all of you uh, Babylonians. The Lord's gonna put you to shame. You walk with great pride and you haven't created anything. You are a product of, a, um, of the Lord. We have all been created for a purpose. The majority of you people have been created for destruction. Right. When your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Your own, uh, your own sins are going to be your accusers. All that proudness is going to be your accuser in that day. All of this vanity, all this trust in Egypt is going to be your uh, accuser in that day. Our people are uh, siding with this uh, wicked society, man. The daughters of Zion are haughty, man. The Lord is going is going to give you. What you've uh, what you've sown, which is why uh, the hopeful elect are across the four corners trying to uh, sow unto the spirit and not unto the flesh, that we may be parted from our iniquities. Because even even we are filthy, but we're cleaving to Yahweh Shah, and we're hoping uh, we're hoping and confident that the Most High is going to save us from this coming destruction. But all you proud Babylonians in this in this society is gonna get wiped out, man. And two thirds of our people gonna get wiped out too for siding with them. Right. You left off your heritage to side with the heathens, man. Continue on that. What will you do, or how will you hide your sins before Yahweh and His oh, angels? Right. Ain't yeah. no hiding them sins, man. The Lord gonna see it, and He gonna put you to death for it, man. Unless you repent. And we come out here, we do this work, and we walk in this light and rehearse the righteous acts that the Lord may bless us and grant us with a part. Behold, 
Yahweh himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off of your sins and forget your iniquity. And only a third of our people is going to leave off from their sins, man. Only a third of our people is going to get away from this society, man, and try to get right. Only a third of our people have been given this knowledge to believe in it in the first place. That's how it was all set up. Huh. From the foundation of the, of, of the earth, man, huh. the, Lord, the Lord gave one third of our people the opportunity to come back into their heritage, into their nationality. That's right. And they were going to be out here rehearsing the righteous acts and separating themselves from this Babylonian society, man. Because yep. throughout all history, you would, you've had persecution of, uh, of the Lord's chosen. And you've always had those that stuck by the uh, the Lord to the best of their ability. Huh. And you always had uh, a vast majority of our people who sided with the heathens, man. Right. That, that, that proves reincarnation as well. Come. Huh. That proves reincarnation. That proves that at the end of the day, the Lord has a chosen people. And the contract, although we've broken it, is still belonging to us. The old and the new covenants. Both of them still belong to us. So it don't matter what these people think, man. You gotta think, the Lord gave you this gift to see spiritually what other people can't see. Which is why even when you get knocked down, man, you get back up. I can say something. That's a good point that the brother made that, you know, a lot of people try to bring out the fact that, hey, man, y'all claiming y'all Israelites, the Jews or whatever, y'all with, you know, y'all uh, y'all forsook, you know, Jesus and this and this and that. and. So now he made this covenant with everybody and it's like no if you go back to the to the beginning of this the rules was if you obey my commandments just go to um and do the wrong if you obey my commandments you'll get all of this if you disobey my commandments you'll get all of that but it was never that all right you know you disobey my commandments I'ma just engraft everybody into this thing and I'ma get a blessing to them. That's not in there. And a clean cut for that is that uh the Lord, the Lord said that um he prayed for them, he prayed not for the world. Exactly. So why would he die for them if he uh why would he die for some people he wouldn't even pray for? Exactly. You know the Lord, the Lord already to us is pure. To all of the uh to the pure minded, everything is pure. But to the uh, the reprobate man, nothing is pure. Everything is corrupted. Everything that comes inside of, of these other people's minds is corrupted because they believe in uh, they believe in evolution. They believe in all of the strong wine and uh, philosophies, the wicked philosophies that they've been taught since a youngster, and they can't leave off from it. It's it's like an addict who can't leave his addiction. Our people are addicted to this Babylonian society. Yeah. And they will they will uh, sacrifice their dignity to be joined along with the heathens and still be counted less. It's not like they joined with the heathens and now they, they got some kind of status. They still look at you as the bottom. But because our people would rather cover their transgressions and hide their sins and live in iniquity, they've joined themselves to the heathens. And the Lord said, uh, could you get Isaiah 30? Because the Lord said, uh, woe be unto you, man. You know, that trust in the spirit of Egypt. Because that's what our people do. They trust in the spirit of Egypt. Is government assistance? Does government assistance, you know, these philosophies, all of these things contribute to the spirit of Egypt, man. Bring it on. Yeah. Isaiah 30 verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, said Yahweh. And that's what our people are. Uh, two thirds of our people are rebellious children, man. And that's a cut, because if, if the Lord was really talking about the world, he'd say the whole world. Woe to the rebellious world, the entire world. The Lord only cares about the nation of Israel, man. And that's that's pure to the pure-minded. That's why uh, Paul talked about the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Believing everybody going to make it, and everybody it's going to be some uh, rainbow coalition in the kingdom, everybody believes that. The majority, a billion people believe that. That's not a mystery. The Lord gave this mystery to his, uh, his his elect, his hopeful elect right now. But in that day, it's going to manifest. Go ahead, go ahead. Like I said, yeah. The Lord said he changes not. So like the brothers said earlier, 
If he's gonna say, he's gonna save us a select few in the beginning of the time, and do my commandments, he's not gonna change and, and graft everybody in, like the brothers were saying. The change is not. Like you say, Malachi. This is Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, said Yahweh, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, yeah. that want to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. And, and, and our people trust in the shadow of Egypt, man. That's why they do picket signs and protests, because they trust in the, the spirit of Egypt. Thinking uh, if they ask nicely, the spirit of Egypt gonna give them some crumbs. Man. That's why the Lord say woe to you, man. Destruction. Uh, you will go back to Second Edges. But I just wanted to bring that up because uh, two thirds of our people, man, are rebellious children, man. When you when you really get into this book, man, and you start studying this this book, you start studying the history. You start seeing the greatness and the honor and dignity that our people had at one point in time, man. And you start carrying yourself a different way. That's why the Lord said uh, that you uh, you didn't you don't seek the counsel of the Lord, because our counsel is these scriptures, man. You know, our counsel is these scriptures and the laws, man. Because when you actually following the laws of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh you're different. You walk different. You talk different. You think different. You see yourself in a different light. You almost broke tonight, man. <laughs> and when your sins are brought forth, you shall be ashamed before men. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. What will you do, or how will you hide your sin before your Yahweh and his angels? Before your house himself is the judge, fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall Yahweh lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. That's how you get like, that's how you get delivered. Leaving off from your iniquity. Having faith, having faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And that can get tricky, man. You dirty in your all your transgressions, and that demon of doubt will come in your head, and, and when you mess up, that demon of doubt will hit you. And try to and try to get you to uh, knock you off your pivot. Because once you come in this truth, you start dealing with different battles, man. Mainly the battle of the mind. That's why it's constantly uh, etched in your brain throughout the Old and New Testament, especially the New Testament, to have faith. We don't have the luxury of our records and our family genealogies. We don't have the, uh, the eyewitness accounts of the miracles that the Most High uh, did for our people. We can't go to our granny's granny granny and, and she can confirm that this happened. Everything is based off of faith. But it's through that faith that we have to have a supreme confidence that not because of us, but because the Most High said, if we turn away from our sins and have faith, that he gonna save us, man. That's why faith lies, man. Cleaving unto Yahweh Shah and walking and rehearsing. We on practice mode right now. Huh. For behold, the burning wrath of the great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trotted underfoot. And that's going into uh, what we're coming into now. Now we're coming into the wrath of the Most High and the, and the, uh, the test of the hopeful elect. Because it says uh, things offered to idols. Now we know the biggest test coming up is going to be that RFID microchip, the mark of the beast. You think about this past hurricane, you done had you had a week with, with little to no food. And you see how crazy these people got. I put that to mind and meditate like what's going to happen when that chip come, man. You know, what's going to happen when that chip come and it's mandatory and you can't get nothing. You're going to need faith in your Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Because these people are going to receive a judgment for uh, trusting in the spirit of Egypt. For trusting in them and getting that, that, uh, that chip, that mark of the beast. They're going to have to pay for that, man. But the Lord is about to try his men to the highest degree, man. 
past your limitations, past your perceived limitations, I should say. The Lord is about to test us heavily, man. During that, this past week of the hurricane, the people was panicking, man. They were panicking, sitting in their faces. It's calling, it's calling the uh, 911. Panicking, man. More, way more than usual. And that was a doubt that we talked about a week without power, man. We talking about one week without power. We talking about a little flood, a hurricane. We haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes of the Lord's judgment, man. That's why prayer, standing these scriptures, is, is extremely important, man. And I say that even for myself, man. A lot of times we get caught up in the day to day, man, and forget the, the priority, man. The priority is stand in these scriptures and preparing yourself for what's to come. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the practice, but when when the Lord closed them doors of mercy, whatever faith that you got when them doors close, that's what you're gonna have to work with. So it's better to build your faith up now. Fast and pray now. Brothers uh, brought out a good point in Dallas. It ain't like the doors of mercy closing and you just gonna get this super boost of faith automatic. Faith is a lifelong journey. You gotta all, you gotta constantly be practicing and, and, and putting your confidence in your how about shimmy how shout, which is why we go through stuff, man. The furnace of our affliction. I want to uh, uh, bring out a uh, second nature six. We we'll talk about the uh, the, uh, the terrible. It's like your seven. Let's start at. Uh, Start at six. Because the Lord gave Edris a parable, man. And the, uh, basically the Lord, he gonna go into it. I, I just let it be read. Second Ezra 7 verse 6. There, there is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left deep water. So hold that real quick and jump to Matthew 7 and 14. Because this, this same analogy was uh was briefly mentioned by Yahweh Shah, man. And it's an analogy that our people who, who done suffered, our nation of people, gotta go through something to attain the uh, promises that we were given from the beginning. The only way that's the, that's how the most high work slow patient process mm. and that's and it's hard for us to keep up with him because he's eternal we have to practice patience in the flesh where our days are few Matthew 7 verse 13 enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and this is broad this is that they got a street named Broadway. This is broad. This is vain. This is broad. That's why everybody's involved. Every manner of lust of the flesh is available unto you. And you can indulge in all of it. Continue on. And many there be which go in, in their ass. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Few. So if that's coming out of the, the, the one you call Christ, Yahweh Shah's mouth, then that means only a few people gonna truly understand what he came here to do, man. It ain't gonna be a, 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 a mass majority of everybody understanding what uh, Yahweh Shah came to do. It was a mystery. Matthew 13 said that it was given unto you, but unto them it was not given. So you can go back to the, um, okay, finish that up. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Huh. Hey, uh, you go back to uh, second century. But uh, even that, that's talking about these uh, Christian churches who pervert the doctrine. Hey. Joel Osteen's, the TD yeah. Snakes. All these, uh, all these people that, that sell that sell prosperity with a Bible in their hand. They don't sell the true. Uh, they don't give the true doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. They sell prosperity with a Bible in their hand. That's, the one that's exactly what they do. So bring it out, y'all. 
But the Lord said that uh, Nero would go be the path. Uh, but the Lord said Nero was going to be the path that uh, leadeth unto life. And the Lord said he came back that we would have life and have it more abundantly, man. When you think about the life that you have now, it's a, a, a repeated process of nothing, man. Going to somebody's job, working, going home, your only entertainment is Netflix, man. For a few hours. That's Peter the Apostle, right? Peter the Apostle what? What you talking about? Peter the Apostle. Did what? What you talking about? How would Shah say that, not Peter the Apostle? Right. Bring out uh, Second Andrew real quick. Second Andrew 7 verse 6. There is also another thing, a city is built it, and set upon a broad field, and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand, and on the left a deep water. And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. Yeah, I was shot set a narrow path. That only one man can go but once. That means even though we all fellowship together, even though we all fellowship, we still gotta go through our own personal journey through this. That's why it says only one man can go at a time. You can encourage, but at the same time, every brother gonna have to go through their struggle. The Lord has a, 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 a struggle appointed to each individual hopeful elect member. We all have our own demons to fight. That's why uh, Paul said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation. Ain't no brother save you, man. Your faith saves you, man. Your belief in how Bashim how is going to save you, man. What you do, your works. If this city now were given to a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Exactly. So if you're not if you're not even willing to, that's why how I said, uh, take up your cross daily and follow him. Because how are you gonna be able to get into this uh, this beautiful city, the kingdom, if you're not willing to do what how uh, was willing to do when he was on the earth? If you're not willing to follow his path, man, you gotta suffer to uh, to, to enter into the kingdom. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so, all, even so also is Israel's portion. It's Israel's portion. That let you know it's not talking about no other nations, man. This inheritance was given to Israel. This uh, birthright was given to Israel. Yasha Allah. Come. Um, real quick, go to... Uh, um, Leviticus uh, 20 and 26. Cause I got an article that I found that I um that I was learning about, man. That show you that our people, man, at one time, man, we was on the level. This was uh, written in an article. This article was written in a in a paper in Connecticut about a Negro who could write Hebrew, and not just Hebrew, but the Lashuan Kadash, the, the, the holy tongue. I have to um, look it up because I don't have it on here. But um, I'll look it up real quick. Um, this was old, old. It was either 1700s or the 1800s. But um, it says, a young, a young African Negro has been in this city for the last few days who claims to be a Hebrew. He is deaf and dumb and as black as the ace of spades. He carries a pad of paper with him and answers all questions by writing them in Hebrew and Lashawan Kodash. What excites the most wonder is that he writes Lashawan Kodash very rapidly. It is the language of the books of Moses and is made a special study of spoken and written to with ease only by the rabbis and highly educated Hebrews. This Negro was sent to one of the rabbis of Hartford who was perfectly satisfied that he is a Hebrew. So he went to uh, one of those Ashkenazi uh, Jews and they was like, yeah, this is Hebrew, man. Mm -hmm. 
And it says, he says that he came from a large town in Africa where there is a tribe of about 20,000 black Hebrews who speak the Lashawan Quarash and are quite prosperous. He also says that his father is a rabbi in that town and that is why his father took the trouble to teach him to write the language which needed an extra amount of labor on the account of his being deaf and dumb. He says his people not only write Lashawan Quarash, but it is their speaking language as well. So this uh, this African who came uh, to the um, states in these uh, 17 to 1800s, I'm gonna get the uh, the date to verify. He said that he he was from an African village, and they spoke the they spoke the uh, Lashawan Quarash in Africa, which shows you that uh, we our people are still in Africa. And that's where a lot of our people ran to uh, during 70 AD, man. Continuing on, it says, he says his people not only write Lashawan Quraysh, but it is their speaking language as well. He left home a few years ago and has seen a good deal of the world. In each town, he hunts up the Jewish sect and there they give him clothes, food, and money. What surprises him, he writes, is that no Hebrew knows of his countrymen in Africa. So that's a cut, man. That's, that's letting you know that our people was all over Africa speaking the Lashawan Kodash. I got another article that, uh, that talks about, um, in the seven, and this got a date on it. This is from South Carolina in the year 1786, and this was a news article. And uh, uh, the author, if you want to look, James Haggy, he did a book where he gathered all the um, articles from that time period to show the diversity of the South Carolinas in 1786. And this right here says, March 16th, 1786, two persons dressed in the Moorish habit are now in this city and are supposed to be the same men that were taken into custody in Virginia on suspicious of their being Algerians. The singularity of their dress induced a young gentleman of the law to ask them some questions which were answered with so much impertinence and vulgarity that the gentleman proceeded to give one of the fellows a little manual correction by way of reforming his manners. A mob immediately assembled and, there, and the men were taken up, being carried to the home of a lady on the bay who understood their language they appeared to be the two men of the Jewish nation who had landed in Virginia from the Algiers and had traveled over land from the state to this. And these were two, and they were considered, uh, they were considered Moors, man. And the lady that they went to, she was a, um, she was a, a slave from the Barbary states, which is why she knew their language. And that lady, her story is even deeper too because they say she knew Italian, she knew uh, uh, Arabic, she knew Hebrew, so she could speak that language. And she told uh, the, the people that investigated these guys that they were from the Jewish nation. That's what they claimed. And they were there in Moorish attire, which showed you that the Moors weren't all is, uh, Islamic, of the Islamic faith. That showed you our people was on a level at one time, man. You had our people with different languages speaking and, and understanding in different languages, man. So bring this out real quick, all right? Because we about to get that back, man. We about to get that back, man. It's not going to take hours of studying, man. The Lord going to give us all of that back, man. Leviticus 20, verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, by Yahweh am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye shall be mine. And the Lord severed us at, at one point in time, man, we had the intelligence, the understanding, we went places and prospered. And that the, uh, the deaf and dumb, uh, the deaf and dumb Israelite, he said that he would go and find the Jewish side of the city and he would get food and money. He didn't have to, he didn't even need nothing. And if he only wrote in the uh, Lashawan Kadash and he couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, speak, he was deaf and dumb. And that lets you know that it was Israelites around him that could speak the Lashawan Kodash as well. That could read the Lashawan Kodash. Our people is on the level, man. The Lord gonna give that back to us, man. Even though we're in this current state, man, the Lord still gave us uh, kingship spirits, man. 
we just trapped in this flesh, man. And that's a part of our battle. Dealing with this flesh and, and fighting this uh, battle of flesh, but we still special, man. Even more so with this truth, man. I mean, a lot of times it's hard to uh, it's hard to uh, hold your head up. Sometimes you take uh, uh, taking these L's, man. But when you think about what's coming, what's coming up, you think about that kingdom and, and what the Lord has planned for us, man. It make all of this worth it, man. It make all of this worth it. The Lord is about to give us something that that eyes have not seen, man. We can't even imagine what the Lord got planned for us. Um, get a uh, uh, second Nedra six and fifty four. Cause this, 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 the Lord made this for us, man. We just gotta go through it, man. Cause we violated. It. But two thirds of our people gon' gon' uh, have to wake up and receive the judgment for not taking heed now. The Lord is is making things happen at a rapid pace, man. Bring it up. Second Ezra, chapter six, verse fifty-four. And after these, Adam also, whom thou made his Lord of all thy creatures. Of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Yahweh, because thou madest the world for our sake. Yes, sir. Thanks for the money. As for the other people which Thank also sir. come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, That's Uber right there, but right? be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them into a jug that falleth from a vessel. So the Lord made the world for our sakes, man. I'm going to pull this precept real quick, man, from uh, 2 Peter, man, because it's a beautiful uh, precept. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, um, I start at verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance. Temperance meaning of control over your spirit, man. These are, these are the, the spiritual things that we're supposed to be occupying ourselves in while we're waiting on judgment. Man. Building up our faith, building up our, um, our virtue, building up our knowledge of our history, man. Because the more you study it, the more it becomes a part of your DNA. You walk with it. You don't just know it, you walk with it and you carry yourself like such. You hear that your heritage is full of kings and, and men of understanding, you walk different. You accept different things. Your standard becomes higher, man. It's to the point now where it's like a lot of these, a lot of these uh, females, man. You just look at them like, like what they really are, man. And you see that there's no value in it. It's like looking. It's like going to a used car lot. You can look them out. You can look, and the majority of them are, are limits. You like, nah, bad transmission. Let me keep it moving. And from, from eyeballing it, you can kind of discern spirits and you can see what you're willing to deal with and what you're not willing to deal with. Your standard starts to raise, man, because we, we are uh, the Lord's putting the spirit on us. It said in Leviticus 20 that uh, the Lord severed us. And the hopeful elect is being severed right now. We're being separated from the rest of the pack. That we may usher in a new age, a new, uh, a new kingdom, a new civilization of righteousness. That's why the Lord is putting us through these trials because Yahweh Shah had to earn his keep and we're gonna have to earn ours. But our glory is gonna come in the kingdom. Um, which reminds me, uh, get uh, Ezekiel 36. Thirty-six, uh, verse twenty-two. Because this is a this is a temporary situation, man. Though we though we carnal men, man, we mortal men. We can only see 
things in the flesh, man. But spiritually, you gotta you gotta know that the Lord is coming back, man. And, and through the Spirit, that's what's keeping you going, man. That's what that's what's preventing you from going back into the world. Even if it feels like sometimes you gotta drag yourself. The Lord told us it's gonna be days like that. That's what prayer and fasting is for. Ezekiel 36 verse 22. Therefore say unto the house of Yahshua, thus said to Yahweh, I do not do this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. Because we profane the Most High's name through our actions, man, through how we carry ourselves uh, on a day to day, man. Back in, uh, in the ancient world, even now, as a nation of people, we're supposed to represent Yahweh Bashim the creator of all things. That was our responsibility. It's still our responsibility to judge the world in righteousness. That was our, that's still our responsibility. And that's why the Lord is doing this. He's not doing it for us. He's doing it because he put his name on us. And we profaned his name. But he's still giving us a covenant. And he's not going to go back on his word. I see y'all on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Christians. Who, us? No, we are Hebrew Israelites. We believe in Yahweh Shadow. The one, the one you call Christ, we believe in him. We follow him. But his, uh, the Christianity doctrine, we don't deal with that because it's not biblical. You got any questions? Uh, yeah, I believe in God too. Like I believe in the spirit of God. Like, like, well, like the mechanism of God, like uh, the spirit of love and the spirit of evil. Like I understand the roots of like what could cause me to destruct myself. Well, the Lord is real. He came. This is His people. So if you come here and you look at this, this is what they're called today. Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Dominicans, all of these people are part of one family. I say 12 tribes of Israel, Israel was a man. What about everybody else? Everybody else is not included in the nation of Israel. Why? Because that's not, that's that's like uh, you just seeing another um, a, another nation. That's not, that's not, he doesn't, they don't come out of this alone. So it's a family thing. That's why it's not a part, they're not a, they got, got smoke, got drink. We're allowed to drink. We don't smoke. Y'all watch porn? No, I don't. Yeah. That's serious about this? That's a heart attack. I got a little This is uh, Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. For thou art the holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So whether really, you believe it or not, according to the scriptures, the Lord put this nation above all people on the face of the earth through his covenant. And through this nation, the Lord is going to uh, have them run and manage the world in righteousness. Yeah, you think the world's coming to an end? Of course, well, this age. Yeah, whole shit with the eclipse and all that shit. Exactly. He knows the signs in the heavens. The Lord is about to bring judgment on this place for the slavery, for the rape, robbery, and murder, for all of the wickedness. Not just the slavery, but the, the way the earth is being ran. The food not being real food, the air being contaminated. All of that wickedness the Lord is going to judge. Water, everything we consume. Yeah, so it is the end of the world, but it's the end of an age. This age of this world being in this condition, ran by these people. So God is gonna wipe, he's gonna wipe it out? He's going, yeah, he's going, he's going to wipe out a lot of people. Wipe out the whole shit. Not the whole shit. There's a elect. He's gonna, he's gonna take certain people with him. Yeah, there's an elect of this nation. One third of this nation is gonna make it out of here. Two thirds of this nation is gonna die. I think I'm one of the chosen ones. You think you're one I, I know the truth. What's the truth? I know I know the roots of I know the roots of evil. Like I know it and I, I explain to people nobody understands me. It's real life. What's the roots of evil? No? That's no. Not. It's my particular life. situation, my root of evil is... No, 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 I'm a wing, but I get it. Is, uh, what's up? 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 What's
sets your brain like it does that's pretty you know like that's why that when i started doing these things that's when i knew something spiritual was uh the subject to my life like i knew that right there is a spiritual uh, mechanism you know yeah. like like yo you can actually fast and experience something like you can feel like uh you can feel like spiritual and shit and that's what it's meant to do. When you afflict your flesh, your spirit gets stronger. In it. Bro, I drove from Jersey all the way here, and I didn't eat nothing. Like I, I, just, I was, I, I didn't eat nothing for three days. Like I just drove down the road, like just trusting God. Like just like sleeping in motels, like just fasting. Cause I had a, I had a situation in my life where I was, oh my God. Are you guys tempted by this? Right here. Are you guys tempted by this? You guys want to leave in this? The flesh? Uh, that's mm -hmm. that's, that's, <laughs> well, well, you can look at females. There's nothing wrong with that. That's another thing. Like, that's natural. There's that's so natural. much temptation going on that it seems like impossible to be holy. That's another form of fasting, too. Fasting, huh? fasting doesn't just mean uh, don't do this food. It's denying like, yourself <laughs> worldly pleasures. Yeah. Even if it's the women, yeah. you can, if you say I'm going to not deal with women for a certain amount of time, just be by myself and fasting. That's also a fast, spiritual yeah. fast. Yeah. At the same time, right. it's not a sin to deal with women. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. not a sin to deal with women. The Lord says, be true for the whole time. Yeah. But well, um, using sex with pleasure, what's that called? Be good. That's what you're doing. Well, wouldn't that lead me to glory? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't necessarily. It wouldn't necessarily lead you to glory because in the ancient world, our forefathers had wives and concubines. A concubine was considered a lesser wife. So just like uh, today's uh, terminology. Side pieces, side chicks, all of that. It's a it's a concept that comes from a, 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 a solid moral ground. We had concubines. It's, it's lawful for you to have a concubine. It's lawful for you to have so more than one wife. Can have sex with girls? Is that right? But the requirement, if you take on another Israelite woman, you have sex with her. According to the Bible, that's your wife. You got to treat her as such. Every wife you get, you got to be able to provide and take care of. I got to this up, Bring it up. This is Genesis 24, verse 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's that. death. So I, the, uh, this gave him uh, joy, man. You know, he was comforted, he gave him happiness. So you can't take, you know, pleasure from you know, having a woman. And I 
I saw I saw this video on YouTube. It was called Spirit of Perversion. How uh, perversion is like uh, iniquity. You know how it how it's like the root of destruction. It kind of made sense to me. Yeah, yes. I mean, it's yeah, I've been watching porn and masturbating for like forever. And um, you know, like I fasted from it. Mm -hmm. There's like a bunch of shit going on on YouTube, like uh, no fab for 30 days or whatever, and like you abstain yourself from it, and like you uh, you start to feel like different, like you no longer experience anxiety, uh, social anxiety, like you just uh, it's like it like it rewires your brain, you know, like you lose a lot, you lose a lot of a lot of your uh, vital uh, yeah, you minerals even and, and shit like that. Of course. So like I heard that when you watch porn, like you attract demons and shit like that. Like it changes your personality. Like when you masturbate to porn. Are you guys into that? Or not? You guys know about that? I really believe in that because I experienced it for myself. Like I'm battling that now. Like like I'm trying to break away from porn. Like because I know that is affecting me. And um, it's like really crazy because the urge just comes in like like a lion. Well, and no matter how much you try to break away from it, like it always attacks you. Like you could go like a, a year without porn, but it, it, there's always that possibility that it could catch you and, and you could and you could relapse. So the only way to really like clear yourself from that is through God. That's what I heard, and I kind of believe that because I really can't see myself breaking away from this shit. Okay, you do you watch porn? You got a fast and break. No, I do not. You don't. You don't, you don't touch your penis at all. You don't yeah, lust. What kind of question is that? I mean, I don't, it's a good I don't, question. I don't, I don't, I don't masturbate. I don't watch porn at all. So, yeah. But that's something, when you come into the street, you start understanding stuff. Like when we read that scripture, we're special people. Yeah. The Lord called us kings. He said, uh, we're kings and priests. You guys have a church? This is church. This is a church right here? Yeah. Right. So if you serious, man, you uh, that shit drove that shit drove me crazy though. Like um, looking into um, looking into all this, this stuff, it really it literally drove me crazy to the point where I said, you know what? I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna live my life because it's driving me nuts. Nah, you can't you can't think like that because what's gonna happen is a judgment is on you. All these hurricanes, all of this martial law, that shit is just the beginning. The Lord is about to bring judgment. This civilization is going to fall like the rest of them. I know that it is. You got to be prepared for it. So it ain't about, uh, it ain't, the, your, your walking life is not just to live it and not preach your need. You got to step up to the plate. The Lord brought you this so you can see that you're from a chosen line of people. And if you want to come back to your honorable heritage, you need to take that serious, man. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm trying to Y'all all around the same age? Yeah, I'm kind of 26. I don't know, man. Like, I believe in God, but... All right, if you want to play, hey, hey. The most high you want to play with, man, don't put it off. Don't tear it. They say, the scriptures tell you, don't tear it to uh, turn back to the Lord, man. If it's in your spirit, you could be a brain up. If it's in your spirit, man, to come back to the Lord, man, don't put it off because you're too young. You got years to live, you don't want to miss out on life. Man. The thing is that there's so many religions and so so many people are so crazy about it. So it's like, how do I believe, you know? There's only one thing. The, the only thing left is to believe in myself. And just to walk, walk with the spirit. I don't want to go to church because I'm that type of individual. I be saying in church and I just be sensing that shit is fake. You know? Yeah, the Lord wrote you today. Yeah, hey, so listen to this though. It's in Sirach chapter 7 verse 16. It says, Number not thyself among the multitude of the sinners, but remember that the wrath will not tarry go. So, you are bringing judgment. Why are you so confident about that book? Like, how do you know who wrote, who wrote that? The same way you are so confident in believing in the spirit. The Lord shows you what is. The Lord shows you. Yeah, I believe in the spirit. I believe in the spirit because I, I, I see where God took me from one place to another. I see how he put things in my, like, I experienced, like, spirit, like, I had dreams and, and yeah, signs and like, stuff like that, stuff. like, dreams and, and, like, uh, symbols, you know, like, in my life, 
Where I was what, like, what are you basing the spirit? You believe that there's a God, but what are you basing that off? I just, I, I just know that the spirit of love is the spirit of love. But what is God love? represents love. What is love? love? According to the Bible, what is love? Love is because I know that if you watch porn and you keep watching porn, you, you're not gonna look at a woman the way that you should. You, you, because I, I already I can see the difference. Like when you watch a lot of porn, you masturbate, you don't appreciate a woman. Because porn doesn't represent love. It just shows uh, action when you know sex is happening in a, in a crucial way where it's being displayed as as just something nasty. So I know for a fact that that's not life. Life is life is you love a woman. You love a woman. You stay with one woman because it wouldn't make sense for me to be jumping from woman to woman my whole life, getting my heart broken here and there because. God doesn't want you to be broken, you know? God wants you to be good, you know? He does, but Bro, you gotta know what good is. I was, you when I was, in, love, you I was, I was attracting low quality females because of the demon that I have in me. The demon that I have, the, this crazy lust that I have in me. I was attracting both the lowest quality women. Lowest, the lowest of the lowest. The lowest. But you know why? You know why? You gotta walk. You gotta walk. You believe it. You believe it. There's a guy. You do it. You do it something else. But you gotta understand that there's a moral code. You think God created all of this stuff in order and you just let humans do whatever the fuck they wanna do? No, I know that there's regulations. So, so. You have to live by those regulations. If, if you say you love them, you gotta prove it. Oh yeah, I know for a fact. It's getting better. Though. It's getting you gotta, better. You gotta follow the commandments. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get you a drink, yo. I don't want a drink right now, man. We out here working, man. You know, sure, bro. You said you believe in God, but you don't believe in God. We can't take you, you know, we can't take you seriously. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can do it? See what you what you come down, you come down with your heart. Heart meaning your mind. Come down, whatever comes to your mind, you just bring it out. We're going by a set rule. We're going by a set strip. Rules is from the most high. That's what we get out of That's all we say. We probably don't believe in the same thing. Stop going and moving the God. What you said, your father, what you know what you um, All I have to keep in mind is that the God of love is the God of love. And, uh, you know, right now I know that I'm not in a alignment with God because I'm drinking, I'm smoking, you know, um, I'm fucking up my body, you know? And I know that God doesn't want that for me. You know, I know that God wants me to be at my, my highest state mentally. You know, he wants me to be sober-minded because I believe that being sober-minded is the best state of mind that you can possibly be in. You know, you don't have to have a drink to be satisfied. You know, you should be able to come to a satisfying point at a sober state. You know, you should be able to 
find that, right? Am I wrong? Like, do I really need a beard to feel some type of way? Or to feel good or whatever? Sober-minded. Sober-minded. God wants you to be sober-minded because the mind is everything. Your mind is the central station of everything. Everything goes through your mind. Whatever's in your mind, whatever is marinating in your mind, that's what's gonna affect your whole life. Nice. Where do you get that from? If you don't believe that's from the Bible. The Bible talks about that. Whatever you believe in, whatever, like if I, if like right now I could think about anxiety. I could think about bad moments from the past and, and literally my hands could start sweating. So do you believe in the Bible? Huh? Do you believe in the Bible? Uh, I can't answer that right now because I haven't gave the Bible a chance. I haven't gave the Bible. I have multiple Bibles. You believe but in God? I believe in God. I believe in God, but I don't believe that. I don't believe like in this whole Jesus Christ thing. Like, I feel like all that stuff is just put out there, you know, to control the world. And there might be some truths in the Bible, but it's also mixed with lies. So you got to be careful what you're feeding into because it could drive you crazy. So how, but how would you know that if you haven't really given the Bible a chance? Where did you get that? There's how would I know that? Because where I know a lot of things already. So, so where did you get that? There's lies in the Bible. Where did I get that? There's lies in the Bible. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, they display Jesus Christ as a white man. Obviously, a lie. Yeah, that's obvious. So that's a lie. Um, that's not in the Bible. The whole thing about him being crucified that might just be a little baloney story. The whole thing about him being here and, and doing all that might be a baloney story too. God might just be a spirit. God might just be a spirit in the wind, you know? And we just might be humans that have to just catch on to that spirit. Like, we just have to flow with the spirit. So the, the crucifixion of Yahweh Shah is you know how many things outside made of the Bible. It's not just the crucifixion of the one you call Christ didn't just happen in the Bible. It's recorded in Roman history. It's recorded in uh, Roman historians as yeah, well. But you know how many they, all of them lie. All of them just made it up together. Bro, this, bro, like the world is ridiculous. Man. Like, yeah. we can't, we can't. Like, I, I, all right, I, I respect that you, you know, you gave your life to that and you believe in that. You're faithful to that. But, but then again, you gotta. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta step into your own body, you know, wake up in the morning and be like, you know, what does the spirit want me to do today? You know, like, flow with the wind type shit. Like, you know, you can't just be opening this book and being a slave to this book, because in all due reality, you know where the fuck this book came from. I'm calling. You know what I'm saying? We do. So, no, we don't. Yeah, we do know. No, no. We actually research stuff. We don't just listen to opinions. We actually oh, you know how many research, research about baloney stuff exists? It yeah, yeah. sounds really convincing. Well, that's that's up to you. Well, that's that's according to your faith. If you don't have faith in it, that's up to you. I have faith. But it don't make it. It don't make it untrue. I'm the believe. type of nigga that yeah, walk, I could walk down the street right now and I just be like, Yo, something's gonna happen tonight, and it does because I cook. I cook that. I cook those thoughts in my head. I say, Yo, I'm gonna have this by this time, it happens, because that's, that's God. Like, when you set goals, you vision them with uh, an intensity in your head, and, and they come into reality, that's the power of God. It's Romans 3 verse 3. Bro, I can teach y'all niggas, man. I can teach y'all. Should the unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, may God be true, but every man a liar. One more time. For what is something I believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yet, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. You see, like, there's a lot of lines there that are popular. Like you know, second interesting like There's a lot of lines there that are that are real. That, that is true. I can relate to. That mm -hmm. there, I can't mm -hmm. argue. That like, that's right. What he just said. No, I know that there's, yeah. but I believe that there's like half lies in there. Too. Yeah, this, is, this is the book. You thank God will protect His word. Go ahead, bro. The book of Sirach, three and twenty-four. You think he, he protect For his many word. are deceived by their own vain opinion, and evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. Yeah. And tell them what he said. Study to show your own self bro. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you that's don't nice. be deceived. Yeah, because don't be deceived. you got preachers and people that teach it. 
just to get your money and and to get you to believe in them. Trust me. You you I believe mean, in them more than you believe in God. There's false prophets and check this out though. This is the, I, like, I believe in the spirit of the Lord the same way you do, right? Yeah. So hearing your story, basically hearing your testimony, don't you don't you feel that the Lord be brought bad. you I, here? I, I know y'all gonna be at that same time.